Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the third in our IoT Security Raspberry Pi emulation videos. In this third foundational video we'll be installing Kali Linux. Now we've already downloaded and installed Oracle VirtualBox and the VirtualBox extension pack. We've also downloaded the Kali Linux OVA and for that matter the Metasploitable OVA from the Cisco IoT Security Curriculum website. If I go to my Downloads folder, you can see the Kali Linux IoT OVA file, approximately 7.4 gigabytes in size, and the Metasploitable OVA file, just under a gigabyte in size. Now, providing you've got Oracle VirtualBox installed on your system, you can actually just double click on the file and it will open up Oracle VirtualBox and get the installation process of the OVA running. However, there's another way of doing it. You can open up Oracle VirtualBox you can go to the file, import appliance and then just go off and find the OVA file. So we'll choose a virtual appliance to import. I'll go to my downloads folder and it recognizes the extension .ova and only shows the OVA files. So I will now double click on the Kali Linux IoT security OVA and click on next. There's two ways of doing it there you see. So either double click on the Kali Linux IoT Security OVA file or open up Oracle VirtualBox file, import, appliance, find your OVA file and either way you'll see this window come up. We can see the name of the OVA file, we can see the description, we can see the guest operating system type, number of CPUs, the amount of RAM, one important thing that we do need to do is we need to make sure on the drop down box for the MAC address policy we generate new MAC addresses for all network adapters. Okay, so just click on the drop down box on the MAC address policy and generate new MAC addresses for all network adapters. And then click import. And what this will do is it will import the Oracle VirtualBox appliance actually imports the virtual disk image. We can see this virtual disk image has the extension .vmdk and it seems like it might take a reasonable amount of time to do this. It's kind of unusual this is. It starts off with four minutes, sometimes it goes up a little bit higher and then all of a sudden it goes very very quickly toward the end and you find it gets done in less time than you probably thought in the first case. What I will do is I will pause the video until that's completed. OK, I've just unpaused the video. Uh, we've only got seconds remaining now. Uh, even though it actually said uh, in one point that that was going to take around about 10 minutes to complete, it took around about four minutes. Uh, obviously, it'll take longer or shorter times depending upon the power of your PC what type of hard drive you've got. This uh, laptop has an SSD in it which does actually help considerably. And there we go. We have the Kali Linux IoT Security OVA imported. If we have a little look at the settings we can see that we've got the name IoT Security Kali. It's a Linux type. It's based on Debian 64-bit we see that we have one and a half gigabytes of RAM allocated. The display currently at the moment has 3D acceleration enabled, 128 megabytes of memory allocated to the display. The graphics controller is a VBOX VGA. Now you'll notice it says invalid settings detected. 
So what's it telling us? It's saying the virtual machine is configured to use 3D acceleration. This will work only if you pick a different video graphics adapter to disable 3D acceleration or switch to the required graphics adapter type. Now what we could do is we could switch off the 3D acceleration. This laptop actually has a reasonably fast NVIDIA graphics card in it so it's detected that Oracle VirtualBox and it's going to see if it can get the guest system to use the power of the host system's 3D graphics card. So it might be nice to have 3D acceleration enabled. You'll have to play with this. It will be very dependent on your system. You might need to disable 3D acceleration. You might be able to get away with just switching to graphics card type. So let's try VM SVGA. Seems to think that that's okay. The invalid settings now disappeared. Storage. The IDE controller, in other words, the CD-ROM drive is empty. We can see a hard drive here. Uh, so this is actually a file on the system. It's a VDI file, but it's the uh, hard drive for the guest operating system. Network. We're bridged. We're bridged to my Intel Gigabit network controller. So what it's doing is it's actually bridging the guest VMs network card to the host systems Intel Gigabit network controller. Um, if I type uh, Windows key R and type in ncpa.cpl ncpa.cpl will quickly launch the network control panel applet when you're running multiple monitors it always launches it in a different monitor than the one you're recording on but here we go uh, where you can see that I have an Ethernet adapter here this is the one it's bridged to uh, which has my connection to the internet on it I also have some other Ethernet adapters because I have some USB 3 to gigabit Ethernet adapters here and I've got uh, the virtual box host only adapter which appeared when we installed Oracle VirtualBox. Um, this is actually extremely useful and this VirtualBox host only adapter we'll make use of in order to connect our Kali Linux machine to our Kumu emulated Raspberry Pis. And finally there's my Wi-Fi adapter which currently isn't connected. Okay so if we bridge the adapter to my Intel Gigabit network connection this will actually mean that the Kali Linux machine will show up as a, a distinct machine on the network. It will get an actual IP address from the router on my network and it will show up as a distinct machine on the network. We can use NAT in which case it will hide behind network address translation. We can use a host only adapter. If we use a host only adapter this will actually bridge it to the host only adapter that I just showed you a moment ago in the network connections properties applet. Uh, which will allow us to connect to air emulated Raspberry Pis. But for the moment I'm going to leave it set to bridged adapter. Currently the USB controller is not enabled. I don't really need to use the USB controller um, so I think I'll just leave it like that. Okay, this is good. While we're here we might just as well install the Metasploitable OVA so again, file, import appliance, go to my downloads folder, double click on the Metasploitable OVA, next, and what I will do is I will generate new MAC addresses for all network adapters again, and import. This should be considerably quicker, because it's a much smaller file, so literally a matter of seconds. The nice thing with Oracle VirtualBox, of course, is if you do build your own um, guest operating system and put all your applications in it, you can actually export that to an OVA file, which you can import on a different system. Okay, so we now have the IoT Security Kali Linux image up, and we have the IoT Security Metasploitable image fully installed. I will try to run the IoT Security Kali Linux image. I can do that by double clicking on the name of the image. 
and here we go and you can see the uh, grub the grand unified bootloader and Kali Linux is starting to load Oracle VirtualBox is a wonderful piece of software it is a type 2 hypervisor so it runs on top of an operating system as opposed to a type 1 hypervisor which runs on top of bare metal uh, for instance um, VMware ESXi server and there we go and the default username will be root R -O -T, and the default password will be tor which is basically root backwards okay Now this is a six or seven year old laptop we're running on and it has hardware acceleration enabled in the BIOS. It's actually an Intel i7 processor, one of the very early ones. And you can see we now have Kali Linux up and running. What we can't do at the minute is we can't go full screen. We don't have the option to auto resize the guest display. So when we move the window around we cannot actually get full screen but we'll fix that in the next video and also while we're here you'll probably notice that uh, we have if I open up a terminal window I'm now going to actually type shift 2 and shift 2 gives me the at symbol so we're actually using an American keyboard at the moment we'll fix that in the next video as well so Kali Linux is fully installed up and running if I type APA, you'll see that it has, in this particular case, because it has a static IP address assigned, um, it didn't actually get an IP address from my wireless router because there is actually a static IP address assigned on this Kali Linux image. Cisco have set it up that way. Um, I can show you the file that contains that information. So if I do a nano of etc network interfaces we see that uh, Cisco have set it up with a static IP address if this had been set up with DHCP because I bridged the adapter it would have actually um, sent a DHCP discover offer request acknowledge Adora uh, broadcast off in order to get uh, the IP address but in this case it's statically assigned. Okay, so that's all good to go. Um, what we'll do is we'll now shut this video down. We have Kali Linux installed. We also have the IoT Security Metasploitable installed, but that's just a case of double clicking on that and then that will also uh, run. Ah, now that's interesting. I'm glad I did that because we do have an error on there. So let's have a little look. Um, this is the sort of thing that happens on live videos, but it's very useful because you might have this error as well. So could not start the machine IoT security metasploitable because the physical network connectors were not found. Okay, so this is remembering a network connector from probably when they created this image. So we'll change network settings. we could actually go to NAT see if that gets it going might actually have to have a little closer look at that when we actually play with Metasploitable um, it might be a case of um, switching it back to bridged and just making sure that it's uh, talking to my network card okay but you can see that it's actually loading fine now okay so that's Kali Linux and Metasploitable installed so we'll stop this video and in the next video we'll customize Kali Linux just to make it a little bit more user friendly thanks very much for watching